Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is having a good start to the weekend. Uh, nothing says Memorial Day weekend like rainy weather. And this is kind of where we are uh, in New Jersey and a lot of states in, in the Northeast. So again, quarantine life, bad weather. Naturally, the only thing to do is wake up in the morning and look at charts and well, record the video at 9 o'clock in the morning. So I've been up now since uh, 6.30 in the morning, okay? It's 9.20 now, um, recording the video, figure, get, you know, get all this out of the way. And, you know, I started thinking about, you know, how the trading week has gone. And it was some, you know, pretty good action this week. And we'll, you know, we'll get into the individual pivots in a second. But, you know, I started thinking about kind of where I started from to where, I, where I've been. And, you know, I've always maintained the idea of that I, I think I'm really one of the biggest idiots on the planet. So I try to simplify my life. So the idea that, you know, I'm trying to get all the answers of being a perfect trader or uh, not having flaws is, the, is, is, is false. I mean, we're, we're completely, all of us, we're completely uh, faulted as human beings. We're completely faulted uh, as traders, as husbands, as parents, uh, as friends, everything. So I, I started thinking back to kind of where we were, right? Where we were compared to where we are now. So go back in history. Just a just kind of quick history lesson. In 1825, the first railroad was created. This was 195 years ago. And ever since then, you know, you go, you went from literally the first, however they made it, okay, on four little wheels to kind of like Amtrak and, you know, all these crazy, you know, jet trains that are flying all across the world. You know, uh, 80, what was it, 80, 134 years ago, the first car was made, right? And you had this little, you know, car, this little thing that resembled the car, and now you have, you know, two million dollar Bugattis. And if you think about, if you think about how we use right now the personal computer, okay, uh, and everybody looks at IBM and, and Hewlett Packard and Dell, but the first computer was actually made in 1936. So think, think about it. this is 84 years ago. So 1984 was a huge year. Okay, if you're listening to this broadcast, if 1984 uh, didn't kind of play out, or maybe it would have played out years later, chances are none of us would have been, you know, sitting here. So in 1984, um, the first individual trader was born. Okay, I was 10 years old. I wasn't trading back then. Okay, um, I was 10 years old, and the first traders, individual traders that started trading their money were called the Souls Bandits. And for all you guys who don't know the Souls Bandits, again, you could probably pretty much do a history lesson, just Google them. But that was the, the first area that the individual person, okay, not a bank, uh, not a fund, not a hedge fund, not a pension fund, not a mutual fund, but if the first individual can actually get instant execution uh, as long as the market maker represented their quotes, they could get instant execution under a thousand shares. And this was the first time that a person could actually take their own capital, okay, from any walks of life uh, and start tackling the day-to-day -day grind of the stock market. This was 36 years ago, okay? We are right now in literally the first inning of compared to what this is, what trading is, compared to what every other industry, most industries are uh, in the world. And the amazing part is none of us have the answers, okay? I, 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 wanna, I, I want to be extremely clear on this, okay? I'm doing this almost 21 years. So this was basically 14, 15 years out of the, af, after the first individual trader started trading, okay? By no means am I grandfathered into the conversation of the original traders. Of course not, okay? Uh, the people who started way before me kind of showed me the ropes a little bit, right? They were only doing this maybe six, seven years before I was as well. So the idea that if you're started trading 
in 2020, 2019, 2015, okay, and you believe that you should have all the answers right now, you're deceiving yourself. Or if you believe you're getting, for example, trading advice from somebody that's been trading for only four or five years, that they have all the answers, you're, again, you're deceiving yourself. And this is, you know, this is the type of business that there is no blueprint, okay? Think about it, 36 years old, the, the business started literally, literally when I was 10 years old, okay? So the idea that you can have all the answers, have the best trading process, have the greatest money management skills, have completely be omit, you know, any emotional feelings you have is nonsense. The idea that a trading psychologist or a trading coach or a trading mentor can tell you how you're supposed to feel, Okay, when you're in a stock that's going against you in a very, very rapid pace is ridiculous. Okay, the idea that somebody should tell you how you're supposed to feel every single day to tackle problems that they're not going through at the same time that you're going through is ridiculous. This is a business. This is not a team sport, folks. Every single person is built completely different. All of us, I, you know, I've been saying this for years. Everybody's DNA is completely different. Um, again. I've never been, I've never been medically diagnosed, but I'm pretty confident to say, just like a lot of people, I'm pretty much bipolar. Okay, I go through my mental highs, I go through my mental lows, but again, I, I always keep my mind uh, and keep my eyes on the prize of the big picture. And I know a lot of people are just like me. Okay, and the idea that somebody else should tell us what we're supposed to go through, what we're supposed to feel, how we're supposed to. Uh, get over our problems is is insane is completely insane and the idea that all of us should proceed the same way the one way trade exactly the same way it just doesn't make any sense in the world and you know you, you see the stock market kind of where it is right now and people are trying to flock to other people that believe that they have the answers that they believe that they have the magic formula. You know, the whole, you know, you can't go on social media without somebody using the buzzwords. You know, easy, right? Three magical patterns. Trade for 15 minutes a day. You don't need any experience. You don't need any money. All you need is, is a computer. Hell, you could trade off your iWatch. You don't even need a computer. You don't even need a laptop. Okay, these are all buzzwords that, again, attract the masses. And the problem with people are attracted to nonsense, okay, you're eventually going to be out of trading. You are. And the funny thing is, you've never really are going to have a shot, a clean shot to actually succeed. And what you're seeing right now in the modern day market, that again, the whole George Costanza market that I've been kind of highlighting now for the last three weeks, that nothing makes sense. Again, none of us have the answers. None of us, okay? There, there's, there's, there's nobody you could turn to right now in the market that's turning around and say, don't worry, I know what I'm talking about. Just, just listen to me, follow me. I know you only have an $800 account, right? What do you mean? Why can't you trade Amazon, right? Not everybody can fit with everybody's process. Not everybody can fit with everybody's lifestyle. Not everybody fit, because everybody has different account sizes. And the most important part is again, and this is where I've always maintained the one common denominator that all of us have. It's right in front of us, right guys? It's absolutely right in front of us. Uh, there is no magic pill, okay? There is no magic formula. If you think, if you're not on the Forbes list, okay? If you're not on the Forbes list and you're worth at least, forget, forget about even the billions. If you're not worth at least $100 million, you're an idiot. Okay, you're an idiot and shouldn't be giving trading advice to anybody or anybody shouldn't be listening to your trading advice. The most important part is right in front of your face. It's right over here. Okay, you can respect somebody's opinion. You can respect somebody's uh, method to approaching, but it's all right in front of us. And the idea that you need, you know, you need other people to hold your hand. You need 3000 people's opinion um, to kind of figure out what's in front of you is, is laziness, is complacency. And it's, it's self-entitlement that you should completely remove right now. Because again, if, if you are not waking in, you know, if you're not waking up 
incredibly early and putting in that extra manpower, just understand somebody on the other side of your trade is. And, and believe me, uh, I'm speaking literally in the live webinar for seven hours a day, five days a week. I'm trading all day. I'm answering emails all day. I'm speaking to traders all day. After the close, I do my research, record the video, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. So the idea that you think that I want to wake up at 6.30 in the morning on a Saturday, okay, after all this and my brain is completely, my tank is empty, my brain is shot, to, to, do you think that this is fun? This is not fun, but this is completely necessary. And again, a lot of people are trading based on the idea that this magical pill, this magical bubble is just going to pop and this magical light bulb is going to set in front of your face. And, and again, with all everything that everybody's going through right now, whether it's mentally, emotionally, financially, okay, and the most irrational market that I could remember in the last 21 years, okay, you have to figure it out. You, you really do. And it's not going to come uh, for everybody at the same time. Uh, you're not going to get that aha moment at, at, at the same time. You're not going to get that moment of clarity. But the more time that you put into this business, okay, the more time that you get that screen time, you know, that thousands and thousands of hours, again, it might not benefit you uh, monetary right now or today or, or, or tomorrow, but it, it's setting up a foundation for you subconsciously that eventually your path to having your aha moment of clarity will click. So the idea that somebody, you know, Joe Trader 69 from uh, Spokane, Washington, who's been trading for two and a half years, has all the answers, you're, you're delusional. I'm, an, I'm telling you right now, I've been doing this for 21 years, and I'm the biggest flaw trader on the planet. It might not be obvious because I know how to fix my flaws before they turn into something very, very aggressive. But I'm just like everybody else. So that's why I have to wake up at 6.30 in the morning. I have to put in ridiculous manpower just to get into the next trading day because I understand if I'm slipping for one moment, if I don't you know, have my A plus game, it's a wrap. Okay, it's a wrap. And you know what happens? You know, you know once you lose, you know, lose money on a trade, Okay, if you're not emotionally stable that day, if you're trading emotionally, okay, that little paper cut that we've been talking about, again, does turn into a severed head. And again, a lot of new traders, for example, you know, that first trade of the day, if they're wrong, okay, and they're, they're not mentally sharp that day, it, it's a snowball effect, okay? It, it really is an aggressive snowball effect, and, and, and it lingers not only for that trading day, it spills over the, the next. So again, guys, it, it's super important you know, forget about what anybody's talking about, especially on social media. Just you have to put in the work, guys. Look at the charts. Keep looking at the charts. I, I've been saying this for years. Even if you're a brand new trader and you don't know what the hell you're looking at, the most, the, the greatest gift you can do so is repetition. It's all, it's like shooting free throws. The more shoot free throws you're going to shoot, the better overall eventually you become a free throw shooter. It might not happen tomorrow. It might not happen that next week and next month, but eventually with practice and repetition, again, repetition equals screen time. Repetition uh, doesn't equal putting on trades. It is equal screen time and it equals back testing and research and everything else like that. Eventually, you'll become a better free throw shooter. So the idea, so for example, that Shaquille O'Neal was one of the worst free throw shooters of all time, steadily he actually got better. Again, shooting 53, 54%. Is that better? Well, it's better than shooting 38%. And that's the whole point of kind of our individual journeys. We have to do whatever is necessary to put our situation to win long term. Again, it's not going to translate into tomorrow. If you open up your computer today and start looking at a chart, for example, on Netflix and say, oh, okay, I get it. I understand why the stock went lower. I understand why this could be a premium setup going for this week. This one chart is not going to do anything for you. But again, if you keep on back testing, you know, Netflix and see exactly why it went from point A to point B, why it went from point Z to point A, so forth and so on, eventually it's going to have, you know, that have that positive effect. So please, at next time around, you know, you, you're asking opinions about somebody in the stock market. Remember, we're only 36 into this. Okay. There is no blueprint. 36 years is nothing. Okay. You're talking about you know, you're talking about 195 years that the railroad was built, right? You know, 100, what, 35 years that the car was manufactured. We're 36 years in. Nobody has the answers. Um, there is no blueprint. Nobody's going to feel exactly the same way. Again, picture this. What trading psychologist can possibly tell me? What can they possibly show me? What can they possibly make me feel better? When I'm sitting in a trade, like, for example, like on Netflix a couple of days ago, and you know, I'm sitting in a trade, 
and they're spreading the stock out you know, 50 cents at a time against me and I'm down $3 in a trade in a matter of 45 seconds. What can they comfort me? What words of encouragement can they give me to tell me how to overcome this? Guys, it's all about us. We're relying on us. Uh, even though, for example, you know, I'm not a big golf guy, but I understand golf is an individual sport. You have to fix your swing. You have to fix your, your mental makeup. So please, before you, you know, open up your computer and start asking 3,000 different questions about your favorite you know, Twitter traders, okay, get to work, guys. I guarantee you there's, there's no more gratifying feeling okay, than actually putting in the work and seeing your results play out because you put in the manpower. So uh, this weekend is a long weekend. If you're an options trader, get your ducks in a row. If you trade futures, get your ducks in a row. If you trade pivots, again, back test. We have 10, you know, 10, 11 hours of content breaking down the PS60 theory. Do what you have to do, okay, to put yourself in a better situation for tomorrow. Okay, the past is the past. We don't live there anymore. Monday is the first trading day for the rest of your career. The most important part is, again, Take the necessary steps to get better. So uh, let's talk about the market. Uh, Friday, uh, Thursday, we talked about uh, potential, right? Potential, um, you know, there was definitely signs. We saw signs of a potential uh, market back test on Friday. Um, a lot of times, again, the indexes are not going to put yourself in a position to turn around and say it's pretty obvious. Again, I think charting... Uh, charting and looking at technical analysis is not a subjective sport. There, there is no room for debates. If, if stocks confirm supply, stocks are going to go higher. If stocks confirm demand, stocks are going to go lower. So for Thursday's session, uh, from the Thursday night session, I said, look, there's, there's signs that suggest that we do have a higher probability for the market going lower tomorrow. And again, when I say the market, okay, uh, I'm talking about the individual stocks we trade. I'm talking about weakness in Amazons and Netflix and Roku's and Alibaba. And granted, I totally forgot Alibaba had earnings uh, next day, so it, it played out that way that it was weak. But obviously, again, I just totally forgot they had earnings. But the most important part is, again, having an opinion. Okay, having an opinion, let it play out. Whether you're wrong and your opinion is completely destroyed based on technical analysis and reclaim the other way, that's fine. Okay, we're allowed to be wrong. We're human beings. We're flawed. We're idiots. We're schmucks. All those good things. But again, the faster we realize that, the better we'll be. So Thursday night, uh, we would do. You know, we did the video. If you watch the video Thursday night, we talked about the realiza uh, realization that there is a similarity, or there was a similarity, that we saw. Uh, we saw right around here, right, right around here on this kind of this blow off top area, kind of a reversal the next day. And we got that, right? We got that Thursday and we got that into Friday. And you saw, I st started seeing some pretty weak uh, market action pretty much through the whole day. We, you know, got a little bit of a rally towards the end of the day and the queues actually turned green, which is actually very, very bullish for this week because the idea that they reclaimed uh, the five-day moving average, but but again, we were looking at the point of one day at a time, uh, one trade at a time, and you know we got some really good value um, Friday at the open. Okay, literally at the open, that first 45 minutes to an hour or so was very very aggressive, and then the market completely stopped, like like literally stopped. And although there was some good pivots, um, we really did see what happens when people start losing the mental edge, start losing the mental juice to get really worn down towards the end of the week. Now, again, did the idea of a long weekend take some of the steam out of the market? Um, you have to say at some point, yes, just the idea that even though people are not flying and going on vacation, people are driving, renting homes, whatever the case may be. So you did see a lot of the juice being pulled out of the market. Uh, on Friday, especially like literally after the first candle of the day, and it was complete ghost town. And unless you stayed till after three o'clock, okay, and this is where a lot of these pivots started breaking down, especially on the short side. Amazon started breaking down, uh, Netflix started breaking down, and I kind of like a lot of these names uh, going into Monday uh, on the short side if they start further uh, confirming. But it's very, very important to kind of understand where we are. Uh, where we are on the on the landscape. So from the technical point of view, uh, we did get that back test. A lot of names did. A lot of names did not participate. We'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. But what I like what I saw, and this is kind of a 50-50 proposition entering uh, Monday. What I did like what I saw was the bulls, and again, this is, we're talking about the Qs. 
We lost the five-day moving average at the open. That's why we saw this, those aggressive flushes. And then what I like, what I saw towards the end of the day was that the bulls reclaimed the five-day moving average. Again, the five-day moving average is an incredibly important uh, short-term indicator. So if you look at uh, if you look at the dynamic structure of the market for the week, and again, it was a pretty aggressive week. Number one, the indexes were up three. Uh, all of them, all the major indexes were up three percent. And um, the idea of a possible global reopening. Uh, and the idea of a potential vaccine eventually uh, will be available to everybody uh, kind of trumped, no pun intended, uh, kind of trumped the idea that the, the, that the, the China-U.S. trade war tension was back on. Again, spring hopes eternal, right? Or whatever the hell the, the terminology is. So there was a lot of optimism. The market continues to kind of negate bad news and that's very very important so going into this week um there's two areas I, I can make a case for for two areas market is still very very strong again very very big moves all week like for example in names like shop uh continue to be strong and chipotle continue to be strong and nvidia who came out with earnings after a big big run had a chance to fall twice and we'll talk about again the individual pivots in a second had a chance to fall twice and it didn't again continues very, very strong strength. Uh, Apple, for example, again, big strength in Apple. Facebook, ever since uh, they came out with that news, uh, ever, ever since they came out with that news, the first headline uh, that they were gonna offer, um, offer uh, their own uh, webinar service versus uh, ZM. They've been on a very, very big run as well. Uh, Amazon is on a big run, but again, last couple of days are showing some weakness and I wanna kind of address that as well. So the, 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 the the glass half empty side is still saying that everything is fine. Everything is great. Again, I don't trade with rose colored glasses on. I, I like to look at things from both sides of the track. I want to make sure again that the idea of everything will be okay, that this was the generational bottom. Again, I, I, I don't buy that anymore. I'm not naive. I understand that stocks are very, very strong. There's a lot of value uh, every single day to the long side. But again, the last thing I want to do is say, ah, don't even worry about it. Just buy the dip. Everything will be okay. This is when you capture, you know, this is when you get a, you know, this is when you get a, a baseball bat upside your head it, without noticing. So you have to look at the signs. So the, the bull side, the bull argument is very, very clear. Here is, and I don't want to use the word bear argument, but here's the sell argument. Okay. So let's look at the high flyers that we've had in the last week. And again, if you've been watching this video, uh, these videos for the last you know, even the last week, you kind of you kind of know my, my thought process. So Zoom had this big, big run, okay? Big, big run. And just when it had a chance to kind of open up, right? Kind of open up the field and go into the goal line to the 52-week highs, it stalled out and rolled over and hit the 10-day moving average. If you look at Friday's session, again, didn't participate in the recovery. So again, we're one day away from confirming this bottom to go lower. The one that started it all was Netflix. If you guys remember a couple of days ago, I said, look, there's a rounding top, there's a blow off top, there was a five day, uh, five day confirmation, the five day went to the 10, there was a 10 day confirmation, it went to the 20, and again, look what happened on Friday, right? It confirmed the 20, and we'll get, again, we'll get into the individual pivots in a second, and now look how much room it has to the downside, okay? Amazon as well, again, huge move, right? For all you guys who caught the whole move uh, from the 2360, uh, swing pivot all the way up to the 2500s, you know how strong Amazon has been, okay? But again, you saw similar similarities, okay? You had the blow off top, it took out the previous day's low, it stopped at the five day moving average on Friday towards the end of the day, it confirmed the five day, again, we'll get to the scenario, then now it could go lower as well, okay? So you have Roku, for example, and again, let's take, let's take the downgrade from Friday out of the equation, okay? We started seeing the previous day, how a breakdown was imminent. You saw the pattern play out. You saw the triple bottom of the 111.36 area. 111.36 area, 12.50, right? We saw the 14 break on from on Thursday session. It was a nice little, uh, nice little scalp. So all this was setting up. And now the idea, again, you start looking at other companies as well, uh, like a company like Boeing. Had a big, big chance to run, had a huge pivot 
on uh, Wednesday, was it Wednesday or Thursday? I had that huge pivot off that 137, made its move, but it kind of died out a little bit and didn't confirm. So you can make an argument, even stock like Alibaba, who in my opinion had, came out with a really, really good quarter, right? Incredibly good quarter. Uh, again, you, you can make the argument, the Senate, you know, the whole Senate passing a bill that, uh, you know, the Chinese companies could have uh, a harder time keeping compliance, uh, being, you know, being, uh, Registered with all major exchanges. Again, you can make that argument as well, or you can make just make that argument. Well, Alibaba had a really, really good run, and now it's time to take profits. So you can make an argument on both sides of the equation. What happens next? For me, it's all about technical analysis. Again, it, it's not a conversational piece. It's like somebody a couple of days ago said, "Hey, Dan, there's no way Tesla's going down." As I was shorting it to 796, and then on the way back up. You know, at seven and 814, 821 level, there is no way Tesla's going up. The stock went to 835. So again, it, technical analysis is, is, is not an, uh, an area for discussion, okay? It's either gonna confirm or it's not. So you can make a case, if you're a long-term investor, that you love the company, that's fantastic. You're talking about two, five, 10, 20 years away. I'm talking about interval to interval, channel to channel, long, short, day by day, tr trade by trade. So the, the conversation is completely different. And I, I think, again, please respect. If you're an investor, please respect the trader. If you're a trader, please respect the investor. Again, our worlds don't cross. It's very, very rare that, you know, a, you know my pivot on Tesla has anything to do with your investment, whether it's long or short. So it has nothing to do with us. Again, all due respect. And I, and I say that in the most humble way. I respect every any single person that clicks a mouse, whether you're an investor, trader, scalper, option player, future, whatever it is, I give you the ultimate respect. Again, nobody knows what we go through except for other traders. So I, I, I want to put it out there. But the idea that you're telling me I'm wrong on a long pivot or I'm wrong on a short pivot, it just doesn't make sense. Again, it's apples to hand grenades. So again, please respect any traders out there uh, it, again, it doesn't make a difference what they do. It's not going to affect you. Okay, Word, okay. Words, you know, words are just words. Like if I if I think Tesla's a long, you think Tesla's a short. How is this going to affect your trade? It's either going to happen or not. So again, all traders, please respect your your brothers and sisters. Again, we're we're a tribe. We we all we got, man. There's there's nobody else that's going to you know is going to is going to sympathize with what we're going through. So again, we're trying to you know we're trying to to create a great environment of mentally stable human beings, okay? The only way we could have that is kind of being on the same side. So be uh, be very respectful. Again, at the end of the day, nobody really cares about your opinion. Anyway, uh, so going into this week, um, I do like some names. I really do. I, I do like some names to the long side. Um, I've been watching this NLW. Looks really, really good. It's just kind of just sitting here, just waiting, uh, waiting. Um, I like Tesla, right? I like Tesla this week as well. It's just kind of sitting there and waiting is waiting. But again, you could turn around, uh, you could turn around and say, look, I'm, you know, Netflix is one day away from getting hit. Roku, you know, had that big nasty move on Friday. It looks like it wants to go to the 50 day moving average. Amazon is gassed out, right? If it confirms these two channels, we'll go down to the 10 and then we'll go down to uh, the 20 day support. So again, we want to make sure we're prepared for, fr for Monday's session. We want to make sure that we are uh, open-minded to both sides. Because again, the queues did remount and reclaim uh, the five day on a close, but it's very, very important to kind of have, you know, open mind and don't be brushed uh, into the corner. So uh, let's talk about quickly Friday's uh, session. Uh, again, here are the pivots. Um, you know, I only did a couple of trades uh, and then everything else was kind of dead for the rest of the day. Uh, 358 continues to be the after hours high on the video, uh, pre-market supply, it needs to reclaim and then build. So 358, you guys kind of saw what happened uh, off the 358. And actually th this event happened uh, after the, the initial short. So here was the 358, right? Here's the 358, I actually tweeted about this the night before. It kept on getting rejected here, 358, 358, 358, 358. Finally took out the 358 uh, and went to almost uh, 364. Uh, Tesla, again, these are continues to be the big levels. Uh, I actually caught uh, a pivot off that 820, what the hell was it? 820, 829 to 832, and that's it, where exactly we got rejected. So these are gonna be the big levels uh, going in for Tesla for next week. Uh, Roku, downgraded 1130 for bills below can flush. Uh, Roku got destroyed, and again, it wasn't a pivot, 
right? It wasn't like I want a sneaky pivot. It was just macro, right? Here's, here's the 1130, right? 1130 was the lows. Uh, from May uh, May the 1st, right? So here's 11.30, and it broke 11.30. just got destroyed. Went all the way down uh, to 107.60. Uh, BYND, um, oh, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, so I took a short also in the video. 351 of builds below can flush. Experienced traders only. I thought it had a shot to get down to 344, but the stock was incredibly resilient. So I shorted it. It went down to like 48.5 very, very quickly. You didn't even have a chance to... Uh, even chance to react. So I wound up, you know, making a cup of coffee. I scratched on the trade uh, very, very quickly. If I didn't cover, I would have got completely destroyed. Uh, BYND again, um, you know, not, 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 a, not a move at all. I mean, BYND, I like that. Uh, I like that 38 and a half. Uh, I like that 38 and a half, uh, 39 level again, only went to, uh, you know, 39.40. And again, if you look at the daily chart, and this is my whole point, if you look at the daily chart, right, this thing is one day away for possibly uh, aggressively back testing. So nothing really doing there on the upside. Uh, Amazon again here here this triggered towards the end of the day. So I wasn't even around for this, but uh, 241.40, 240 is a big five day support. It's the shortest term sentiment. If it builds below, it can flush. And again, not a huge move yet. That's the word yet. Uh, but it took out the 40, went down to 24.30. Again, this it confirms it could go all the way down to 23.87. Uh, shop continues to be a monster. Uh, A10 needs to build. Again, uh, we, we've been talking about the shop pivot now every single day. Uh, A10 needs to build. Uh, big move on shop. You know, big, big move on shop here. So here is the A10, right? So here is the A10 and traded right to the highs of the day. Of 827, which was supply. It probably has one more day up, maybe to the 830, uh, 838 level. So big, big move there. Uh, Boeing never made it up to uh, the 4175.42 area. Uh, Alibaba got destroyed. Uh, 205, huge support. If it builds below, it can flush. It got destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. Uh, here is Alibaba, right? So here is Alibaba. Here is the 205. You see this 205 area, right? Rising support. So 205, it broke 205, got just, just absolutely destroyed, went down to 199. Uh, on earnings, again, Roku take on the way down. I still like this uh, now. Uh, shop take on the way up. Uh, Roku just completely destroyed. Uh, and not a big move, uh, not a big move on uh, Apple 318. Uh, it only went up like 50 cents, not a big move there. Um, didn't, you know, Netflix again, towards the end of the day, uh, broke the, uh, 830, confirmation went down to like 428. But again, I think there's a bigger move coming, uh, this week on Netflix if it confirms, uh, Baba never got up there. And, uh, this is the last uh, pivot of the day, 825, 826. It finally confirmed off that second entry. And again, it wasn't a huge move, but again, it ran up to, uh, you know, ran up to like, uh, 832 again. Uh, eight thirty. Excuse me. It ran up to uh, eight thirty one. So again, this whole channel is super important uh, for uh, Tesla uh, going into this week. So again, uh, going into this weekend, guys, I'm kind of delta neutral. I, I am a little bit sell biased on the high flying beta names. Uh, I do like the overall market because again, uh, the Qs did reclaim the five day. If the Qs re, you know lose the five day again and the bears start confirming uh, Friday's price action, obviously we'll go. Uh, I don't want to use the word 100% sell bias, but again, we are getting very, very close for a pretty aggressive rug pull. So guys, please get into the get in the work, better on yourself. It's only about you. It's only about you, your ability to uh, function as an individual standing on your own two feet. You don't need anybody, guys. It's right in front of you. The key is getting proper information and using it wisely. Guys, have a great weekend. Have a great rest, and I'll see you all on Monday. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.